Hey folks, welcome back to your Lake Fort Guide. Episode of Guides Network today. Got a special guest, one of my favorite ones that I've ever had. This man right here to my left, Mr. Brian Robinson. Hey guys, what's going on? Dude, it's so awesome to have you on here, man. Appreciate it's such it, man. a pleasure, buddy, man. Looked up to you a long time for, if you don't watch football, which I don't know of anybody in America that doesn't, but if you haven't been watching the NFL, this man right here had a long career. How long did you play for the Vikings? 11 years. 11 All years. in Minnesota. Phenomenal yep. career. Homeboy from Texas. Grew up in Southeast Texas. Yep. Went to University of Texas. Won a national championship. Cook em. I mean, just Texas football legend. Now, really into bass fishing. You fish, what, the Coastal Series? Texas yeah. Teams, so like you're, you're in a big tournament. Yeah, I've been doing it for a couple of years now. This will be my second year to do the FLW Coastas. And I've uh, been fishing Texas Team Trail for a few years now. So, um, all pun intended, I'm hooked. Yeah, absolutely. He is hooked. And man, we're glad to have him in the fish community because Brian is just an outstanding individual. He does a lot of great charity work. If you watched our video from the day on the water, we talked about his charity work in that one. Um, just great to have you in the community, but we're really glad to have you. I'm honored to be in the boat with you today. It's been such a pleasure. We've had a lot of fun. Um, you know, we're going to talk about a technique today that we didn't use on this lake because we're on Power Plant right. Lake and they've got heated water. They're in a different seasonal cycle. But we know most of our guys out there, especially over the next month or so, it's going to be prime time. These guys are going to be fishing for pre-spawn bass, spawn bass, some of that dirty water. There's a technique. It almost has become kind of a forgotten technique with some of the new great baits that have come out over the last several years. But, you know, we all grew up throwing a spinnerbait. Correct. And so we kind of have left that behind a little bit. And I know that you throw it a lot. I know you have certain types, and it's something that you utilize a lot during this time of year. So today, folks, we're going to have Brian fully break down how he goes about catching big pre-spawn to spawn bass spinnerbaits. Hey guys, like Billy said, we're going to talk about spinnerbaits today. So spinnerbait is something that I'm not a huge fan to go throw all the time, but I think it's something that is a forgotten part of people's arsenal. And it's something that I think is definitely underutilized nowadays. And so for me, I want to talk about how I use spinnerbaits, especially during the pre-spawn going into the spawn stage. It's, I think it's something that can catch a lot of big fish. Um, and it's just something that a lot of people forget to do, you know, with the whole A-rig craze and things like that. There, there's different ways of doing it, but I think a spinnerbait is something that can set yourself apart a little bit. Uh, I'll start with this one. So this is kind of a sexy shag color from Strike King. Uh, it's got a little Colorado blade, a chrome one, and then a gold willow leaf blade. What I like to do with this is if these fish are starting to get around bushes, things like that. Uh, maybe some, some grass that maybe is a little bit uh, coming up almost underneath the water a little bit. This is something that I can either flip around bushes and slow roll it through those bushes. They'll come out and eat that. Or if I'm above, trying to stay above that grass just a little bit, I can burn it a little bit. Uh, that to me is a little bit more of a situation that may be something um, a little bit warmer water starting to get towards that spawn area. When you're slow rolling it through the bushes and things like that, that to me is a little bit more of a colder water situation, something to get, entice those fish to eat. Probably my two favorite ways to do it is one, I have a three quarter ounce spinnerbait. I like to get around the drains and things like that, throw it down the middle of those drains, slow roll it on the way back. Those fish will attack it heavily and like I said, with the A-rigs and things like that, a lot of people will throw that stuff. And sometimes that A-rig bite kind of dies. And a way to get around that is to pick up a spinnerbait and throw it, especially in the colder water, you know, the 55, 54 degree water temp is what I really like to do. Just throw that down the middle of them drains, bring it back super slow. I mean, I'm using a heavy rod, fast action, um, you know, anywhere from like a 6.2 to 6.4 gear ratio is what I like. I do it on 16 pound test. 
Um, and I'm just throwing it out there, letting it go to the bottom, and then slow rolling on the way back. Those pre-spawn girls will eat this spinnerbait. I'm telling you, it's like a hit that you've never had before. Trailers, um, it depends on the situation. If I'm fishing a little bit more muddier water, I want something that's gonna have a little bit more action, a little bit more kick to it. If I'm fishing clear water, like for example out here where we're sitting, I want something that maybe has a little bit skinnier tail that's not going to create so much vibration, but it's still going to have a lifelike movement that gives them uh, the illusion that it is a shad or something like that. Um, my two go-to colors are pretty much white or a white and chartreuse. I love throwing a white and chartreuse in a little bit more stained water. I like throwing a white in a little bit more clear water. Uh, that's just my personal preference. Blades. I like to throw gold blades in a little bit more stained water, maybe cloudy days, things like that. I like to throw the silver blades in clear water, cold days. Um, I've got another setup back here that I can show you, which is a one ounce spinnerbait, and it's got dual willow leaf blades on it. It's got one gold, one silver. Um, it is a white spinnerbait. I was actually throwing this this past week on Lake Travis, uh, which is a deep clear water lake. The reason I like this is because in that clear water, it gives them the imitation that it's shad. Now, what a lot of people forget to think about with a spinnerbait is these blades give you the imitation of a flash of maybe a little group of shad or something like that. But when they see this actual bait right here, they think that is the shad that they're chasing. And I'm telling you, when you get a bite on a spinnerbait, there is no mistake in it because they hammer it. And that's what I love about it. So this one ounce, I'm actually throwing on, same thing, 16 pound test line. I like to throw it on a probably a 7.6, uh, at least a 7.6 rod, heavy, fast action once again, and same thing. You know, anywhere from a 6.2 six, six, to 6.6 six, six ratio, somewhere in that mid-range ratio is what I really like to throw. Throwing it down there, letting it go to the bottom, slow rolling it. Now, one thing that I will do when I'm throwing this and I'm slow rolling it is I may pop it every once in a while. Give it that, a that action like that shad is trying to flee real quick or something like that. Or I may stop it and let the blades do the work for me. Um, there's different ways you can do it. You just have to stay in tune and let the fish tell you exactly what's going on and exactly the presentation that they want. But that is pretty much um, what I do with spinner baits. Now one thing I will talk about is uh, trailer hook or not a trailer hook. The times that I like a trailer hook is if especially, I will normally go out with some sort of swim bait or something off the back of it, some sort of trailer like that. I will normally go throw. If I start getting short strikes, you know, where they're hitting it, but they're not eating it, that's when I will take off that, that uh, minnow or whatever trailer you've got on there and throw on that trailer hook. That gives you that extra hook in the back that allows them when they're doing those short strikes to really get a hold of the bait. So now I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna show you guys how I do the retrieve. Okay, so we'll start off with a three quarter ounce spinner bait. So as you can see, we've kind of got like a little drain out here that I'm fishing. And basically what I'm doing is throwing it down the middle of that drain, or if you have a grass edge or something like that, throw it down the edge of that grass drain as well. Uh, but basically I'm letting it go to the bottom it's on the bottom now and I'm just slow retrieving it now we have a lot of grass here with this one so you may have to speed it up or something but basically I'm gonna slow retrieve that that reel you know you're you're going to 6.2 6.5 something like that you want that slow retrieve that way those bass in that colder water can locate it and then come find it now earlier I was talking about how sometimes I like to pop it or let it fall so for example okay i'm slow retrieving it slow retrieving it and then all of a sudden you know i may want to pop it you know just to give it that action where it shoots real quick and those blades really start to spin so you know i'll be going along going along pop it or the other way i like to do it is if I'm fishing along, fishing along, fishing along, and then all of a sudden, I may just want to stop it. You know, just for a split second, 
Give it that pause where it falls down. So what that does is when you stop that bait, that lead head or tungsten head, whatever it may be, um, falls down. And what happens is those blades start spinning. That gives that fish the illusion that either that shad is dipping down or falling down, or it may look like a dying shad to them or something like that where that shad is just kind of fluttering down. Um, and that's why I like it because a lot of times you'll get fish that will follow that spinnerbait and they'll just follow it. They won't eat it. And so when you get that popping action or that falling action, that is what entices them to strike. That's what gives them that, re that reaction to, you know, whatever it may be, whether they think it's a dying shad or whether they think that shad is trying to flee. Now it gives them that illusion that they have to attack and eat it. Well, Brian, man, great job, man, spinnerbait. It's just kid tested, mother approved. It's been here forever and ever and ever. I mean, ever since both of us started bass fishing when we were, you know, a lot shorter than we are now. Yeah, and it's one of those things that is easy to fish. I mean, you throw it out there, you retrieve it. And once you figure out what the fish are wanting, you figure out what kind of retrieve you want. You know, you, there may be times where you want to burn it. There may be times where you slow roll it and something in between. But it is definitely a lost art. Yeah, for sure. It definitely seems to be a forgotten bait, and uh, the deal is, it is an easy, it is an easy bait to fish. You throw it out there, you reel it in, they bite it, you swing. It's all like it's simple, but some of those little, some of those little subtle things that you're talking about in the retrieve, the popping, the stopping, how to work it through the grass, getting it down in the grass, letting it go to the bottom, like all those different, they're all intricate details that can take it from being a bait that you know a lot of fish have seen or something like that, and turn it into a really valuable tool in your arsenal. Correct, and you, and that really can be something that can be used in all baits across the board. Yeah. You know, there's there's no one way to fish a bait. You go out there and you experiment a little bit. I mean, in all sorts of situations, there may be something a little bit different that them fish want. I couldn't agree with that more. I couldn't agree with that more. You know, it's it's pretty cool what we get to do here. You know, we're we're all about building a community, or we're, we're trying to help people catch more and bigger fish. And we're really open with the information we share. And what's neat about fishing is there, you know, kind of right, there's really no wrong way to go about it. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to catch fish, and there's a lot of different ways on any given day that'll work better than others. And what's cool about this deal is building this community. We're building up a following here. We've got we've got a good sized following now, and it's getting bigger every day. And man, I learn stuff from these guys. I learn stuff from y'all, and, and we appreciate that. And that's what this deal is all about. It's just about sharing information, the love of the sport. Nobody has any problems in their life when they're when they're hooked up. Well, and, that, and that's kind of been my deal and my love and my passion for fishing as well as uh, the community, the fishing community. I mean, everybody, you know, it's not about egos. It's not about any of that type of stuff. It's about catching the fish. And it, it seems like more people want to help people, uh, yeah. you know, and they want to give you tips or give you a bait or do something like that. And, you know, I've only been a part of this fishing community for a short time, but I've enjoyed it so much. Uh, getting to know people, going around all the different fishing towns and stuff like that. And not only that, you know, as you start to really get into this more and more and you start to get into the tournaments and you start to spend more days on the water, you learn so much in such a short amount of time. And you know, I'm not a professional fisherman by any means, but I've learned so much over the last two years just by fishing the coastas and Texas Team Trail and things like that, that uh, you do, you want to get out and share that information with your friends and to the people of the community. Absolutely, man. Well, we can't thank you enough. Y'all give Brian a comment. Let him know what a great job he did for us today. We thank you so much for coming on board here at the Guides Network on your Lake Fort Guide, man. We're proud to have you on here. It's a big moment for me. It's a big day for me to be out here with you. So thank you. Seriously, really appreciate it. And more importantly than all that, guys, Thank each and every one of you guys for watching. Y'all are what makes this thing tick. Y'all are what allows me to get out here and do this every day. So I can't thank all of you enough for the support that you guys give us. And man, keep telling your friends. We'll keep growing this thing. We really appreciate all of that. Hey, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, we have over 100 instructional videos that go super in-depth, super detailed, just like Mr. Brian just gave us. So go subscribe to our channel. Hit that little red subscribe button. Turn that little bell on. Get your notifications. We'll bring you instructional content each and every week, and we'll see you guys next time right here on Your Lake Fort Guide.